So I am choosing which side I want my landscape to go on. So yesterday class we did a sky and I just mixed together some blues, purples, and reds. I sprinkled some salt on it just to give them some cool sky texture, some effects. And right now I'm just doing um, along the horizon line. I mixed blue green together. I made it watery to make it have some distance. This is just my middle ground. I still have to add more layers after this. So this isn't the last step. So I'm adding some pine trees. I start off with just like a triangle and then I add some wiggly lines on the edge and then I'm pulling that color down and I'm adding more trees, making some small and some really big. I just really loosely move my brush and you can see that they're not really detailed trees because they're in the distance. I decided to draw a little house and I gave it a little porch just to imagine that this was, you know, having a good time, a little house in the woods. And then I'm gonna add some more trees and add some more layers of darkness over this as it dries. This is just my light layer. I'm gonna um, go over it once it is completely dry and add another layer of trees to um, create depth with this and add some darkness. So again, this is just one option for my landscape project. Add a little chimney to it and I'm putting some water down. I realized I made this chimney really smoky. So um, I'm going to do some reductive painting where I'm adding in some color and some water and then I pull the color off using an absorbent paper towel. And so a <laughs> really, really smoky house. And so it yeah, lifted the color. So then I had to let that dry for a bit and I flipped it over and I went back to my first colors. I felt like this one was like mountains. Yeah. So I mix a red violet together to create mountains. And I did look at a picture, so it took me a while to get some inspiration. I didn't copy it exactly, but not all mountains are triangles and they're not all perfect. So I was realizing I wanted some more violet in there, maybe some more blue. The color is going to change though, according to what's below your like mountain layer. Like I have yellow below it. I'm putting like a blue over it, so it looks kind of green. And my purple over the orange is looking kind of muted, like brown. But that's okay, I want my colors to be affected by my under layer of my sky. So I'm making some big ones and then I'm blending that down. I made it like a big mountain and I'm lifting that color to create some texture so that it has a rocky feel to it, just a little bit. I'm not going too detailed. And um, notice that I did draw my mountains along the horizon line, following the rule of thirds. So it's not in the middle, it's a little bit lower. And I am going to add more layers of mountains and some land down into the area where most of my yellow is. But for now, I'm just thinking um, about where I want to put things, just putting my middle ground in. So we did our background yesterday class and then today we're focusing on putting something in the middle and then next class we're going to focus on the foreground. So um, I am adding another layer. I guess I was eager, <laughs> eager beaver, to add in another layer. And so I'm just thinking about where I want the darks to be, some shadows. So the layer that I'm putting on now is going to be a little bit more opaque and I had to wait for things to dry in between. Now I did speed this up. Um, if you put this layer on while it's wet, it's just going to bleed in and you're not going to have any defined edges to it. So once we add more layers, it's going to show some distance and I'm just going to keep on making a bunch of mountains, I think, in this week, so I'm feeling the mountains. And again, I make my mountains like triangles and then I add in texture. I was really feeling like doing some cities as well. So my students can choose from trees, mountains, or buildings. I love the Seattle skyline, and I really should have started to sketch it out, but I just started winging it. I think it's Mount Rainier in the background. I don't know. I guess I don't know that much about Seattle, but I painted a little mountain, and you can see it was a triangle with a couple of uneven edges. I just made my little horizon line. Realized later it was not straight, so I fixed that later. Ran out of memory in this video, so it stops before I finished. That's okay. I wanted it to make it look like it was dripping because Seattle is known for its rainy, drizzly days. So I have the mountain in the background. I combined a couple of things. I don't think you can see the mountain from the skyline, but it was really inspired anyways. So I like added some water down there at the bottom underneath my mountain and you can see how the water dispersed and made like a cool cauliflower effect. 
I realized halfway through making my uh, <laughs> my needle, my Seattle Space Needle, I should have been using a smaller brush. I was using a size four, so I switched down to a size two. And now I'm able to get better deets, details. And so I'm just adding the top dome part of this. And again, you really should use pencil when you're starting to mark these out and then go over it. But I was just so, so excited to start painting this and my kids were eager to learn it as well. So also one thing that I noticed is, oh, dang it, my hand got in the mountain while it was still wet. I did not wait. I was so impatient today. And so I kind of spread some paint around and I removed that later. And then I'm like, girl, you should put a paper towel under your hand. So I did. So I'm just making a, a silhouette, like an outline. So I'm just looking at a picture of the building. You can't see it in this video, obviously. Um, and just think of your buildings as rectangles that build on top of each other. And then I'm adding lines coming off of the sides and I added a triangle on the top of that to give it some texture to the sides of the building to represent the architecture that was built in there. I'm pulling some color down and then I'm going to add a lot of water on it and then I'm going to blow on it and make it look like it's dripping. <sighs> I had to think about what my next step was. Again, I'm using like my size two paintbrush and um, or anything really small. I'm just using the tip of the paintbrush when I'm trying to get little details. Um, and if I don't press down hard, I can get really, really skinny lines with just like the few um, hairbrush like bristles at the tip of the brush. It's pretty fun and simple. I don't think I got very far in this one because my students were talking to me and that's why my hand's just chilling there, but we had a really fun day in my painting class. So I was making this painting be very loose, very freeing. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna add in the foreground. Maybe I can write something on it or draw some like whales or some boats in the water. That would be really cool. So I'll probably do that. Or maybe I'll get some acrylic and add some lights into the buildings. Oh, that would look pretty. Um, if I get some acrylic paint and just do little dots there. So I think and I, what I'm doing is I'm adding a bunch of water onto the areas that um, to make it have like a reflection, adding a bunch of water in there, pulling it off, and then I'm going to pick up the painting. I'm just going to blow on it. Oh, where'd it go? <gasps> wow, that's so pretty. Look at that. 